que, esto, que en la forma de producción um, trabajan diferentes personas, no solo dibujantes o dibujantes, sino también pues, fotógrafas o um, personas que se dedican más a la, a la research. <ríe> Me y, y básicamente trabajan contra esta idea de autoría también del artista genio que que produce una obra, sino partiendo de, 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 de la como herramienta y, y como herramienta que sirva de alguna forma y para que sirva tiene que ser usada y, pueda, y de esta forma, siendo copyleft, puede ser usada pues, para propuestas educativas o de cualquier forma que, que se quieran usar las imágenes. Bueno, um, well, like about their method, um, well, the, the posters of the BIF Collective, well, they're usually like images that like take a long time to make and that depict like very complex issues but they chose this way of like transmitting information because it can be very appealing to like broader broader audiences and also like we're maybe like used to getting information in a like very like sequential way like by text texts or videos or things that like have a timeline but the way they organize information in a more like to say rhizomatic in English interconnected way is also like a, um, another way of like putting information and talking about it and the way they use the graphics is usually through oral transmission like they're actually the graphics of the BI they kind of like re um, reproduce yeah um, the like the tradition of muralism and Like for example, in Latin, in Latin America, I think that there's like a pretty strong tradition of like history being transmitted through murals and through like people talking about them more than like text. And anyway, like they kind of like retake that way of transmitting history or information or stories, basically. Like I mean, like the the big these big graphics end up um, like that. That what makes them like work is the storytelling that goes with them. Bueno, el Beehive ah, sí. Be Collective esto, y, sí, también, nosotros trabaja a partir de imágenes de digestión lenta. O sea, estas imágenes tan grandes llevan un tiempo de digerir, pero en parte es parte de la idea de que el hecho de tener que tomar un tiempo para entenderla, de no, verla, de no pillarla a la primera, sino que necesitas muchas veces que te la cuenten y el hecho de recontar todas esas historias que han sido recogidas primero en dibujo y luego devolverlas de otra forma, o sea, primero recogidas desde la oralidad, pasadas a dibujo y devolverlas otra vez al contar estas historias oralmente, pues vuelves a procesar, a entrar en diálogo con estas historias. Un poco se basa en la idea moralista de, de bueno, pues en México, que igual la historia no se transmite tanto, o durante mucho tiempo no se ha transmitido tanto literalmente o de, con la lectoescritura, sino que también utilizando la imagen o el soporte gráfico para volver a contar esas historias, manteniendo la historia oral de alguna forma, o apelando a la memoria oral. Entonces se basan un poco en, en la tradición muralista para luego a, a basar todo, todo lo que sería el hacer partícipe de esta lucha o llevarlo a cabo a partir de de contar la historia otra vez y ponerla en común en cara a cara o en persona. Um, well, um, basically their graphics like well they've like on like until today they've done like uh, three very big graphic campaigns about the Americas. One was about the Plan Colom like one was about the FTA. Uh, the other one was about Plan Colombia and the other one about uh, Central America, the resistance of people in Central America. That one is outside, you can actually see it, and it took nine years to make. But uh, yeah, well, I was going to talk a bit about like the, the way they do the graphics. Uh, Beehive posters always uh, use animals. You never see people uh, depicted on their graphics. And they, they do that to, like they use animals to st tell stories about people. But the animals um, are useful because they avoid uh, use, like using um, they avoid prejudice on race, gender, or age. And also, animals are a very good way of like crafting metaphors that you can relate to uh, biodiversity, ecosystems, and like different biological issues that are 
also a big thing of like what they talk about. Does it make sense? Bueno, pues básicamente el Beehive Collective ha hecho diferentes campañas. A ver, una es sobre el Plan Colombia, otra sobre el Tratado de Libre Comercio de las Américas, otra sobre el mes América Resista, el mes América Resiste que está ahí, y el de la extracción de carbón. Y el de la carbón, ya. They also made one about coal extraction in the USA and. Sí, la extracción de carbón en Estados Unidos. Y básicamente la metodología que usan para hacer estos postes como habréis visto, uh, utilizan animales muchas veces, uh, explican historias de personas, pero utilizan animales para representarlo, ¿no? para evadir temas de, para salir de prejuicios sobre temas de raza, género y clase, para utilizar también estos animales como muchas veces el superpoder o la posibilidad que brinda la, pues, el, el hecho de representar un animal o, o otro pero que pueda ayudar a hablar de ecosistemas, de biodiversidad que pueda ayudar a hablar de esto de, de, de ecosistemas, de biodiversidad, ecosistema, de biodiversidad. Um, um, also um, like the, the like, well as I was saying like this, the aim of the BI uh, when they craft like these very, very complex like graphics is to actually make them useful so like once a picture is finished it usually takes like a lot of work But like once the graphic is completed, like it's just the start of the whole thing. So like after like spending hours and hours and days and days, like locked up in the studio, like putting all those stories together, then they do tours. They organize tours where they do presentations, where they bring the graphics um, like to different places and and actually like retell the stories that were told to them and share the graphics with other people and gather new stories and kind of like make that graphic grow and well take a life of itself. Bueno, esto, como hemos dicho antes, el Beehive quiere que los que estas gráficas sean útiles, entonces cuando acaban un dibujo de estos que lleva un montón de tiempo, un montón de trabajo acabarlo, es como el inicio de todo el proceso que viene después de que es mucho más la parte de difusión es como más tocha todavía, que implica compartir estas historias, um, volverlas a, a explicar, a, de alguna forma ponerlas en común, recoger nuevas historias y, y, y ver qué se hace con estas, ¿no? que, cobren vida los que cobren vida de alguna forma. Also, I forgot to mention that during the process of like building the whole image and like making sure that the story is like well told and that like, the information is well placed, um, the BI try as much as possible to like go back to the places where they were like gathered all the stories and show the process of like what the poster is looking like to like get feedback from the people that told the original stories and make sure that things are like represented in the best way possible. Bueno, y luego como trabaja es como durante a medida que van dibujando, en la medida de lo posible vuelven al sitio donde esas historias han sido contadas y enseñan el proceso de dibujo en proceso para para tener feedback, para tener pues, crítica o, o ver si esas historias son contadas de la forma como que trabajar conjuntamente en la representación. Si esas historias son contadas de la forma que, que quieren ser contadas. Well, I'm like, I'll tell you this information about the BI. Um, they're like they're known, they're pretty known for like this graphic work they do, but actually the that's only like half of the work the Beehive is doing right now. Um, they're based in a, the Beehive is based in a small town in Maine, up in the north of the United States, in a little town called Machias. Like it's in a very rural area of the states and a very poor state. And they actually do a very, very um, big or important local work. They are like since they moved there like 10 or 12 years ago. They've been like uh, renovating a social center for the town. Now they're actually working on like starting a community print shop, a community kitchen. They organize a very big uh, festival, like all ages festival, no alcohol, called the Black Fly Ball. And like they're doing a very big um, labor in in this in their own like local town where they live in Maine. 
eh, bueno, básicamente esto lo, lo que hace el B5, lo, los dibujos son solo la mitad del trabajo que hacen, que la otra parte es que ellos están en Maine, en, en un pueblo de Maine y en Estados Unidos y también trabajan de otra forma, dentro, de forma local dentro del pueblo, pues construyendo un, un pincho, un, un, una empresa comunitaria. Una comunitaria ¿Qué más? ¿Una casa? <risas> bueno, re, re, um, reformaron el centro social del pueblo que se estaba cayendo, han hecho una imprenta comunitaria, un, están haciendo una cocina comunitaria y un montón de proyectos diferentes. Bueno. Sí. Que también trabajan de trabajo. También, olvidé decir, um, like, ok, what the Beehive do, like, they have, like, the big printed banners that they use to do the storytelling, but then they have, like, smaller versions of the posters, versions of the posters printed in paper offset printed, unlimited editions, um, as cheap as they can make it, like just, the idea is like to get the image out, so they, they do like massive um, print runs, and half the production of what they print is always uh, donated or like given for free to the communities that are struggling against like, for example, like when they did the cold poster, well they brought half of the production to the different collectives and organize, people that were organizing against uh, mountaintop removal coal mining. Like they make sure half of the posters that print are given for free to the people that need them or that can use them. Bueno, y también la otra la otra parte es que aparte de hacer estas pancartas enormes, luego hay una una tirada de no sé grande que la mitad la venden, la otra mitad la destinan a a los colectivos y a y a los grupos que están luchando por esa causa en concreto que se está recogiendo en el póster. <laughs> no, it's too short. Okay, I'll give you a little bit. Let's go to the... Well, and then, after that, after the... Okay, and now we'll swap and like, Tonina will talk about the Utel project. It's the one like we started after like our connection with the Beehive and she'll start in Spanish and I'll do the translation in English. Well, <laughs> well... Después de que Carlos volviera, bueno, sí, vamos a cambiar. Ahora yo voy a explicar el proyecto UTE, que es el que estamos haciendo Carlos y yo, basado en la metodología del Beehive, y él va a traducir lo que yo explique en castellano al inglés, así que va a cambiar. Um, bueno, después de todo esto que hemos explicado del Beehive, Carlos estuvo currando, trabajando con ellos un tiempo y vino a Mallorca, todo emocionado, con ganas de arrancar un proyecto basado en lo que estaba sucediendo en ese momento en, en Mallorca, bueno, en el contexto que estábamos. Entonces, bueno, yo estaba también viviendo allí, vino y me dijo, venga, vamos a hacer un póster y empezamos. En ese momento, esto hace 15 meses, era 2014 y era cuando estaba, bueno, había como un mogollón de protestas ¿no? en el Estado español, pero una de ellas en la que estábamos trabajando desde colectivos feministas a tope en ese momento era el gallardonazo, la ley gallardón. Ok, um, well, I spent like myself uh, like five months working with the Beehive as a volunteer and like I absolutely fell in love with their way of like using drawing, like drawing always been my passion. And when I came back to Spain, like to Mallorca where we both live, I met with Donina, who's also like a passionate drawer and um, Yeah, I actually showed her the work of the Beehive. We talked about like making a poster together and we wanted to do it about something that was happening like in Spain at that moment. And well, it was, this was like 15 months ago. There was loads of different struggles going on in Spain, but like one of the very big ones was uh, this issue with abortion. Um, well, there was this law that they were, the Spanish government was trying to uh, like bring in, like yeah, almost a year and a half ago. That was actually kind of like almost banning abortion and it was kind of like going back to the times of the dictatorship. So there was like huge struggles, like like huge like social movements <coughs> protesting like against that. And uh, Donina was already like pretty organized within like the feminist uh, movement in Mallorca. So we decided we would um, draw our poster, like start a poster about that issue. Pues eso, a partir de, de que estaba en marcha esta, el gallardonazo, que era una... Bueno, el ministro Gallardón quería tirar para atrás todo, bueno, 
casi casi que prohibía abortar en la mayoría de casos, entonces toda la lucha feminista estaba bastante focalizada hacia ahí en ese momento y estábamos trabajando en ello, entonces nos pareció que era a partir de también la red que ya estaba, que ya estaba, en la que ya estábamos envueltas, era como desde donde empezar a trabajar un póster en ese momento y que fuera útil y queríamos, bueno, a partir de esto queríamos llevarlo a cabo en tres meses, un poco más sencillo, un poco más pim pam, pero al final la historia se fue alargando y llevamos 15 meses para, para producir este, ¿no? Sí. What's it like since um, all that struggle was happening and like we were kind of like already connected with like people that knew a lot about the issue, well, kind of like. Um, sí, sí, me están explicando las colectivas. Sí, bueno, um, like we had a, like a kind of a structure already that we could like help, that could help us like with all the information and all that and. Well, it was actually at the beginning, um, it started as a three month long project that we wanted to like finish on time to like use it as a tool against like this law they wanted to bring in. But in the end, like it, as we started like doing research and stuff, it, it just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And well, in the end, it took us 15 months to complete. And a bit. Bueno, eh, y y básicamente la forma en que lo hicimos, siguiendo un poco la metodología del B5, era a partir de reunirnos con, primero con amigas, con, con colegas que habían vivido procesos de aborto, luego con, con, también con, nos reunimos con ginecólogas que estaban luchando también dentro de hospitales, dentro de la sanidad pública para que no se llevara a cabo esta ley, con, bueno, con feministas, con activistas que estaban también trabajando de diferente forma en España y fuera de España. Y como que el tema se fue complejizando, no era solo, solo sobre la ley Gallardón, sino que el dibujo, el proyecto Uter, no solo habla de esto, sino que se iba expandiendo y hablaba también sobre libertades sexuales reproductivas, sobre casos de, bueno, cómo está el tema del aborto en diferentes países también, porque había testimonios de diferentes países, y también un poco pues esto, todo el tema de la reproducción social y cómo, en qué marco se entiende que se lleve a cabo una ley, o se intente tirar adelante una ley como esta. Una antihistoria, la educación sexual. Bueno. Vale. Uh, Aida, no sé por cómo comenzaba. Pues... No estamos acostumbrados a esto. Ah, well, I'm eager to talk. Okay, like, um, okay, our research kind of started like uh, talking to friends, basically, um, to female friends of ours that had had abortions or stuff that told us their personal stories, and then we also like talked to gynecologists and like doctors that are working in the social system in Spain, and this were actually also linked to like the movement against this law that was happening, and then like little by little, like people from different like feminist backgrounds or just so, like people that were like interested in this project would just like come in and like tell us their stories and like as the image went evolving well they would be giving us feedback and well actually had to change a lot of things um, on like during the process he displaced the short names yeah and, and and like in this way that the like as as as, as, as we went like talking to different people and like doing a little more research, um, we kind of came to, we got to the stage where we actually found out that it was actually more, it, like the most important thing we had to talk about wasn't this law that the Spanish government was going to try to bring in, it was actually much bigger, we, were, we had to talk about like history and about um, how the system we live in has been formed and how, like how the oppression over like bodies has been a key to the evolution of, capital, of the capitalist system and we also like well yeah and also like we weren't only talking about stories in Spain we also talked about stories in other places like Chile and yeah and like we also had to like if we wanted to talk about this issue and give like a big vision of it we have to talk about um, we talked about history um, sex, sex education um, struggles and feminist movements and a lot of things Sure, yeah, I mean, like, how much time do we have? 
Well, actually, I think we work much better when we talk about drawings than when we just talk about talking, so... El dibujo, ahora viene como... Hemos acabado, hemos acabado ahora la fase de dibujo, lo acabamos hace medio mes, ¿no? Sí. Hace medio mes acabamos el dibujo definitivo, y ahora lo que viene es la parte de ponerlo en común. Es como la segunda presentación que hacemos con el dibujo acabado. Y, y también estamos pensando a ver de qué forma, dentro de la charla, de qué forma en la charla se recogen estas historias, que se puedan generar. Y estamos, de, sigue de esta forma ahora mismo. They were like, he was asking that, like, is the project still going on? And we, well, yeah, actually it is. The drawing just got done, like, half a month ago, so we're actually just getting started with like giving presentations. This is kind of like the second kind of biggest presentation we're actually giving and we're actually now like thinking and like finding just yeah thinking about what what is the best way or like how are we gonna like continue putting this out and sharing it and yeah. Okay so uh, so I have a specific very specific thing I'm wondering if you so like in the States, the conflict, one of the main conflicts in this issue is the conflict between a man's right to control a woman's body and a, and a woman's right to have a say over. So is there uh, some Sorry, those a woman's right to what? A woman's right to just say, you know, it's my body, I'm going to go ahead and do it, and the man involved doesn't have a right. So this is a, 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 a conversation that's going on all the time. Is there just one little bit in here that just has to do with a man and a woman like chatting with each other, like a conversation, talking about the possibility of having the baby or not having? Because each part of the art piece is a story, right? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Just. Come close and let's talk about the drawing. It's much more fun than just like sitting here and yakking about whatever. But this is kind of like also like the point of this thing of the graphics and what actually got us really engaged with this method is the thing that like um, it kind of makes the transmission of information also fun or at least I find it fun. Uh, sí. Sí, no, so yeah, well, um, your question was if we depicted a, a scene of like a man talking, like a woman and a man talking about um, the right of the man to decide on that conceived uh, fetus. Yeah, now I'm saying you have all animals just like here. You, did, you don't actually have, you have only animals in here as well. Yeah. Mm. I see. Okay, so. But there's clearly yeah. like a male animal and a female, like the penguins. Yeah. The other one I assume is the male. Uh, I don't, we weren't thinking of the size, but yeah, like there is. This one I was thinking 